Hey gang, it's your girl, Old Father Thames here, so let's get stuck straight in and see what we can find out in the foreshore today. Gorgeous sunny day again. Hopefully i fixed the microphone issues. Oh, and I've forgotten about the camera wobbling stuff. I'll um, stand still and stop the camera wobbling. Well, you know where I am, don't you? In the metal region. Oh, it's not a keeper, but it's a nice little chain there. I just spotted a little lace shape, an aglet. Here we go, I thought I'd lost it. There it is. That is what's known as a lace shape, sometimes an aglet. You can see the seam there. And what that is, is a tie for the end of uh, laces, as in laces to fasten up clothes or shoes or and it's like the ones we have now that are plastic and they just go on the end of our laces so you can feed the lace through an eye and do up whatever you're doing up. This is probably from uh, a shirt or mid shirt sleeve. Very nice thing. I haven't found one of these in ages. You go through periods of finding the same kind of thing. And uh, no, not seen one of these in a while. I just spotted a washer down here, um, which tells me, there, I just spotted that washer down here, which tells me it might not be a bad place to keep having a look for other small round metal items like, ah, oh, well that's odd, I thought that was going to be a coin, what a strange little bit of something found a little cluster of coin-like things here. Again, don't know what that is either. Oh, I think the tide's about to come and grab me. Like a bird on the windowsill to lazy. Right, now check out the Thames gilding on this pin. You would think it is gold, wouldn't you? But that is just what the pins come out like from the anaerobic Thames mud, just with this lovely, what we call Thames gilding. Not gold, it certainly looks like it, but it's not. So I'm sticking to this area for a while because it's just lovely to concentrate on an area that's so full of lead items, um, brass items, got coin things, coin-like things. Um, the idea being that things of the same shape and size might be hanging out near to each other. And here's another deliciously tantalizing piece of buckle. What is it with me and buckle fragments? You can see the beautiful detail on there. Probably a knee buckle, maybe a shoe buckle, I'd say 18th century. Oh, to be a whole buckle. But anyway, maybe I can stick all these little pieces together and make my own new buckle. Let me tell you who my pals are today. Over in the distance there we've got Monica, that's my little friend. There's Tom, who I haven't seen for a while, very nice to see him. And then over there we've got Alan. Alan and Monica have both found Roman oil lamps, which is very, very cool. So uh, if I can find pictures, I will stick them up on the screen. I'm not sure that Alan's is online, but Monica's definitely is. I thought I spotted another coin somewhere here, but ah, uh, this might be. Oh no, it's just a nail header. Monica, who is Magica Thames on Instagram, and I will put up her details on the screen. So, what have you found um, today? Just up a little rose farthing. Oh, lovely! Which is in quite 
pretty condition actually on yeah. both sides, which is oh yeah, it's a nice which one. Is isn't nice, it? yeah, very nice. A few aglets and bits and bobs. Always love an aglet. Uh, what else have I got? And Tom found a very nice button that he gave me. Oh, uh, let's have a. He gave me. It's all got oh, enough buttons. Oh, that's a lovely Tudor one, isn't, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. A little nipple, uh, nipple uh, button. Yeah, but that was really lovely. This is making up yeah. my dearth of finds today. <laughs> <laughs> so I can share yours. That's really lovely. Yeah, yeah, oh. that's, I think that's a few bits and bobs and pottery and stuff. Oh, and this weird little odds of. Oh, what is that? That's I odd. Don't know, but it's got it's got markings oh, got on a, it. Uh, that's a strange. It's thing, almost isn't it? like a squashed lead musket ball, but it's not. It's too. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if it's been because sometimes they were misshapen, weren't they, and chewed and bent out of shape to cause more damage when they. That when they went buggy your teeth in. off and chewed it that much yeah i think the chewing i don't know if the chewing thing is a, is a myth or a that a might be maybe if there's a bit of lead sprue Ooh. sticking out yeah uh, maybe you might bite the lead sprue down yeah just to true but i are <laughs> falling over. Over. <laughs> but i did uh, yeah i did hear that their that uh, musket balls are really bent out of shape cause more damage on the way in oh nasty pretty nasty uh, great oh well, i've got a letter g as well oh nice I've got to have a g Love a letter. And a funny little oh. mount of some sort. Oh, yeah, I'm not quite one. sure what that. I found a funny mount down here last time with a W on it. Oh, nice. No, that one has a red mark. It's an 18th, 17th century yeah. kind of W. Um, right, well, thank you for showing me your finds. <laughs> there she is once more. That's Madika Thames, Monica. <laughs> Brace yourselves. Here's something really special. Alan brought this down to the foreshore with him to show Monica and luckily I was there. This isn't something he found, but this is something he bought. It is a 15th century late medieval pilgrim's badge and it's depicting the Rood of Grace. The Rood of Grace was a crucifix kept at Boxley Abbey in Kent in southeast England. According to tradition, the Rood was brought to Boxley Abbey on a stray horse. Now the Rood had a lifelike figure of Christ which was famous for shedding tears. Sometimes the face would also move. In 1538, during the dissolution of the monasteries the rood was taken down and a mechanical device was found inside the head revealing that the miraculous moving face was in fact complex trickery described by one protestant iconoclast as an ingenious contraption of wires and rods that made the eyes move like a living thing and the excitement doesn't stop there let's hit the foreshore once again to see what i find next right guys um i feel a bit awkward about this one i've done a bit of a number on my friends who are searching very close by here but this little beauty is a lovely hammered coin. I've got Tom to the left of me and Alan to the right. And I'm feeling quite bad that I've just found this very close to where they are. But never mind, it'll be okay. Wow, pleased with that. Building again. Check out this nail. Very golden looking, isn't it? Funny old thing. Thames gilding. There it is. I am super pleased with that hammy I found. Um, and it was lovely. Just a little bit of broken pipe, <laughs> pipe bowl. There you go. And it was lovely to see Monica, Tom, and Adam. So uh, they've gone for coffee. I've managed to resist, even though it's absolutely freezing still. And uh, I am going to hit another spot of the foreshore, which is a bit further up, and see what I can find there. All right, so going this way, I'm crossing the old brick highway and getting down to a different stretch of foreshore. Yes, guys, it is freezing again, um, but you know what? What do you expect? It's England and it is February. 
but there we go. You can just see a bit behind me there. And uh, even the swans have got their heads tucked into their backs. They're freezing. The huge swathe of bricks on this bit of foreshore. Found a teeny piece of blue and white willow pattern. That's transfer printed. You can't get away from this stuff, it's everywhere. I believe it first came about in the late 18th century. And as it became more and more popular, well, I'm sure everyone has someone in their family that's got a set of this stuff. Okay, here's a little game for you. I wonder if you recognize what this is from my last video. What kind of ceramic this is clay and what the glaze is, including the firing process. Give you a few seconds. Hopefully you can see that. That is a piece of salt glazed pottery. It's stoneware and that's the base there so it would have stood up it's probably the bottom of some kind of bellamine bartman jug maybe it had the face on maybe not but it looks like the bottom of a jug to me right i just found what looks like a cute little piece of pottery let's see what we can see that's rather pretty isn't it i think that likely hand painted. I've just spotted a much more chunky piece of that pottery I found before. Or maybe it's, I don't know, it could be a different piece actually, but that's got a acanthus leaf, I think, on it there. Again, that's transfer wear nice piece of Staffordshire combed slipwear here and if I'm not mistaken another two pieces of slip comb and I love the way they look like little biscuit pieces and these are slip trailed decoration here this is slip that's been put on and trailed with an implement dragged back to create these patterns here as well. You can see it line there, it forms into a zigzag. Very pretty stuff. Here's another super metal bit of loads of modern metal stuff here. So I tend to just pass on by. But you never know, you could find something anywhere in theory. Tight bowl down here, I think it's plain. There it is, it's got some maker's marks. That looks like S. Oh, I'm not sure, could be a J, oh, I don't know. Pretty worn. Nice flat heel on there, but that's an interesting thing. With a hole in there. Hmm. Could be a little weight of some sort. Cute lead. And the hole's been purposefully made there, so I think it's probably a little trade weight of some kind, rudimentary weight. In the clouds roll by. Like the lights from a distant shore too far. I'm just sitting down to do a little roundup. Look at all my little friends here. Obviously, this pair of feeding them unwise. They're going to get mobbed in a minute. We can only hope. Uh, but they're also like coming over to see me. Well, if they're interested, this is what I found. These are my keepers. 
potential keepers. I might ditch some of them on the way, but so a few modern coins there. Canadian 25 cents. Lovely stag's head on there, or a moose's head perhaps. And some letterpress, pin twists, or so we think. Pin twist slash fastener. Salt glaze, a different kind of salt glaze here. Staffordshire comb slip. I suspect this is Chinese. Hand painted. 18th century. Mm, I don't know, so I'm gonna double check when I get home. I follow a very clever chap called Albano Ceramico and he often answers questions for me, so I'll, I'll have a look at that. I think this is a piece of Westerwald, pretty certain. German stoneware. Westerwald. This is a bit pipe, but I love that it's so ring-like. Might make something with that. Here is that little rudimentary weight. I think that's what it is. It could be a could be a nothing, but I'm guessing a weight. I'm taking home a little buckle fragment. Now, the actual good find of the day. Let's see if I can get some light on this. I can hardly see anything with my screen here because the light's really dimmed. It's very dull. But that is a hammered coin, silver hammy. You can just see the light catching on it there. I don't know which monarch it's from just yet. I'll have a look when I'm home. I can make out some of the legend on the back. God, it's so tiny. I got it out to show Monica earlier and she started freaking out like, no, you're going to drop it. Um, anyway, by the time you're watching this, I'll have found out some details and put it up on the screen there. It's been pierced, obviously, on purpose. Well, I say obviously, but I'm pretty certain that's been pierced. Maybe to wear? Not sure. I'm going to ask a chap a numismatist that I follow called Timothy Medhurst, very learned chap. I'll ask him about, about this maybe. Well, I'm sorry if I can't focus. There we go. All right, so there, there are my keeper finds for today. And obviously the aglet somewhere. What I forgot to do was bring out my finds box. So I've just shoved the aglet in my bag somewhere and I'll find it later when I get home to add to my little collection. I'm still sitting in amongst the pigeon business here. And when I say business, I don't mean their actual back end business. Um, it's great, I love it. Very strange. That chap there keeps going right behind me and feeding pigeons behind my head. Which is very odd, but I'm, I'm into it. Love it. Do they, they're still here. Anyway, uh, slightly distracted. Well, thanks again for watching. I uh, hope it was less windy and blustery on, on screen today. And I'll keep them in the background so you can watch them as I'm saying goodbye. And I've uh, got a nice find, a hammy. Very pleased with that. Let's see what that is. And I mentioned the new numismatist, numismatist, Timothy Medhurst. I've sent him something which I think might be a spent token. I'm not sure if it is, but he's looking into it for me. Um, whether it is or not, in the next video I'll do a bit of an explanation about Spence tokens and show you the one that I have that I think could be a Spence. You've seen it before, it's a mystery item. Uh, I did wonder if it was just a worn back mark of a button, a flat back button. Uh, it's a bit hard to concentrate amongst all these birds. Oh. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if you can hear them. Um, anyway guys thank you so much for watching thank you for subscribing and um, loving all your comments i'll keep messaging back to you uh, sorry if the camera's a bit shaky sometimes uh, what else i think that's about it i hope it didn't make you seasick and uh, yeah if you're not subscribed then please do and press the bell so you get notified when i post a new video that's it see you next time